Okay, y'all ready? Staking a claim in New World. Oh, the volume though. Hold on, look, you could actually use the... Hey there Ooh. folks, today we're gonna be quickly talking about how we go about staking a claim in the New World. The first thing to know is that New World contains three separate factions we can become a part of. The Marauders, a more militaristic group of people. The Covenant, more religious based. And the Syndicate, who focuses on science and research. We science. They only believe in science. Some starting quest lines, and then we can join a company in New World that gets capped at 100 players. These companies act as guilds for this MMO, and the highest rank of these companies is known as the Governor. If someone creates a company within one of these factions, like Syndicate for example, they become Governor and you can join them. Only if you decide to join Syndicate as well. The second rank below Governor would be the Consul, which is like an Officer rank, and there's multiple different permissions you gain access to depending on your rank like access to the treasury, managing army rosters in the territory wars, and even hmm. getting access to the console chat if you are that rank. And this should be separate from the regular company chat too. We also have the mechanic known as the siege window function, and this comes into play if your company owns a territory. Yeah, I've got that much figured out. Claims protection will go down. And this leads us into the territory aspect, starting with the war. So the way that war is declared between factions is that you have to conduct PvP based faction missions to gain influence within a territory. You can yeah. capture the open world fortresses for your faction, That's and this these. will give you various different bonuses depending on which territory fort you claim. But and it PvP. also gives you an influence bonus to speed up the declaring process in that zone. Once the bar has completely filled with influence. So the influence factor is like whenever somebody's taking over one of these zones here, they'll actually say, I'll, I'll see later on in the day, they'll be like, before these upcoming invasions and wars and stuff you'll get a bar like this and the more you do like quests and the more you do like the pvp faction missions or even pve like the pve guys contribute to this and the gathering people do too is whenever they do like town projects and shit so everybody can contribute to the effort and and get this little contested bar to move like he's saying influence gained from your faction the territory will go into conflict mode at this point, the faction that put the territory into conflict can declare war, but previously it was made to where if your company has contributed at least 10% of the total influence required to enter conflict mode, that is when you are eligible to declare war. And the unlikely eligible. that no company has contributed at eligible. least 10%, then any company should qualify. But if multiple companies are able to declare war on the same territory during the conflict, the amount of influence a company contributed towards the conflict status will increase its chances of becoming the Vanguard. Ah, the Vanguard can then choose the army This is what I want. I want to be the Vanguard. I always want to be the Vanguard on all these wars. So, I mean, it could be about, like, trying to make the guild just focus on that, like... Like, we're the ones that do the missions. Like, whenever you join this, whenever there's a war going on or we're going to take over territory, we back up our homies and taking over that war by going out and questing and PvPing or doing whatever. And, and that's really just it. It's just like, we're a guild focused on, you know, advancing the war effort for our faction. That's, that's a good idea. That's cool. Lead the assault. And they gain the lead the assault. The now you can't sign up or fight against your own faction, but you can act as a third party if the leading company were to accept you. So if yeah. and the water are fighting with each other, so you can even back them up with your own team side and vice versa. You also need to spend money to engage in the terrible. declaring process. And this includes the purchase of your war camp. Then comes the territory war battle itself, which is the 50 v 50 mode that consists of three capture points and the objective of capturing the territory fortress itself. After the battle, we come to the settlement management and governing process. The first thing to know is that if no company of any faction currently owns the territory, you My can spend kind of harsh. gold at the fortress to become the first owner. But if you win it through warfare, then the same settlement process after will kick in. There's both company and faction benefits for owning a territory such as the resource supply carts, housing and fast travel discounts, etc. Each territory has its, its own localized market and storage system, but also taxes do play a part. The governing company can set housing tax for players that own homes, refining tax for resource benches, I shouldn't have messed with it. crafting items, and a trading tax for the trading post auction house. This tax comes in the form of gold to the governing company's treasury, and this can then be used towards various different things, including upgrading the settlement benches through town projects, upgrading the fort defenses for wars and invasions, yeah. and selling lifestyle buffs. Setting up any of these objectives will create what is known as town projects. This is a community-based the town projects those are the ones at the bottom actually all these are and it tells you what it contributes to at the top as well so at the at the very tippy top like weaponsmithing supplies needed 
there's uh above that it says upgrade repeaters that's to upgrade the repeaters to tier two i don't know if i can make that big enough to where y'all can see that yeah you see where it says upgrade repeaters to tier two there that's it so that's how they do that okay how do i uh reset transform i should have left this alone I got it all different sizes and stuff we now. We're progressing through a settlement and we normally need to do crafting and gathering related missions to complete this. Now the lifestyle buffs do become available for people that are residents in a territory. You need to first level up your territory standing level which is based on the zone you're in. And then after about level 10 and in different stages after that, you're able to purchase a house. So that's what I need to get a higher level territory standing and be more expensive. But these are normally the more luxurious and spacious housing choices. You also get a discount for your first time purchasing a house, so this is another thing that's important to keep in mind. There's different things that you can it's do with important the house, to keep in mind house trophies that can be obtained and crafted. These will offer different bonuses to your So the first house that you purchase, you get a discount on. He says it's important to keep that in mind. I think that what he's implying there is you can buy a cheap house and get a discount on a cheap house, which is just gonna be such a small discount. Or you can wait and save up your money for a really expensive house which can fit more of these trophies, more of these other things that you got to put in there. And uh, I think that's what it is like, kind of like, you know, maybe maybe it's worth saving up that discount for the most expensive house. And then that discount is a lot more coin. Characters such as crafting bonuses, luck bonuses, and even gathering and combat related ones. You can place down storage chests inside your house. I think that's so cool though. Like storing shit in your houses buffs like your combat attributes. That's that's fucking cool. Give your local bank in that zone. Place down a vast array of cosmetic furniture that also includes housing pets you can interact with. And you can also get access to a fast travel teleport by owning a house that helps you teleport. Hell yeah, teleport. You call. You can own pets is okay. I mean, three houses. I don't one can mind be pets. At level 20, one at level 40, and the last at level 60. And you can have these spread out across different zones. Yeah. And that's the basics you need to know when it comes to staking a claim in New World. Thanks I so need to stake a claim. And farewell. So that was a really good video. And uh, this guy, his name, let's see. Let me get y'all's his name right. Um, let me just pull his video back up. This is actually the New World channel, I think. I think that's what this came from. So this is just on Play New World. This is Play New World. And then here's the link to that video if you guys want to check that out later. What's up here? Uh, you can type all that out if you want. <laughs> if you watch this video back on Twitch or, or something, you can click on that link though. And then next we'll watch Scoring a Turnum. This is actually pretty fucking cool too. I don't know if y'all are going to be as into this as I am, but I thought this was cool. Here's this one. Uh, I actually want to put some padding on this because this video is kind of... Uh, I'll do that at some point. Here we go. I'm gonna make this a different size. It's more of like listening to what they're talking about than anything. But what they're talking about is pretty cool. Amazon Games New World is a game that feels epic. I'm gonna do this quest in the background too. From the lush, verdant forests of Windsward to the desolate crimson wastes of shattered mountain. Every inch of the land of Eternum feels alive and brimming with possibility. But a world cannot exist in a vacuum. To truly make a game sing, you need to fill it with sound. Every strike of an axe against a tree, every scrape of sword against steel, every roar from a terrifying beast. It all helps to create a believable world that you can lose yourself in. And it all needs to work with a soundtrack underpinning the entire experience, immediately telling you what kind of world you're arriving in before you've even set foot on dry land. New World's audio director Jean-Edouard Miclo knew that Eternum needed to have a soundtrack that could be both grand and intimate. It needed to feel epic, but also believable. For inspiration, the team looked to one of the most successful fantasy franchises of all time, Game of Thrones. With this show, Ramin Javadi created some of the most iconic they looked at the games in television history. Naturally, he would be the perfect fit to bring the sounds of Eternum to life. Ramin teamed up with Brandon Campbell, who he had worked with on Game of Thrones and Westworld, to start figuring out the sound of the game. So we started the conversation with them long before we. I love how they did it. The, Everything the logic. When Ramin and Brandon joined the team. Something really big was starting to happen. Patrick Gilmore actually reached out and just 
pitched the game to us actually he, he said look there's this there's this game it's a huge world and, and he just kind of started describing it to us and immediately caught our attention and we, and we said oh my god this sounds amazing i should change the my thing we music thought was here. very exciting about this game was that it was a blank slate we really had to start from scratch that's also a challenge obviously at the same time but that's what's exciting about it getting something off the ground for the first time is also kind of frightening and, and that's really hard yeah. when you're just given a we blank canvas and you're told to paint the early stage of the project it's like oh as such they were like literally everything is the possibilities while creating a soundscape for a world that hasn't yet taken shape was a daunting task the pair approached it with cautious excitement the beginning is definitely the slowest part right you start from scratch you try to figure out your tone your instruments your melodies He's the doing that with a piano. And figuring out, like, instrumentation He's playing and violin and with the process, a piano. We experiment more. Maybe we record some solo yeah. instruments on our own in here, or maybe we bring in some soloists to really kind of figure out what oh. the sound of the game is. And as music is then being implemented and being put into the game, we then go and record the live orchestra, and then that gets replaced in the game with what our original demos were. The mauling of a lewd stalwart. That's crazy. They got that live orchestra for this game. You're hearing this music in the game. It just starts popping off. Da, 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 so it gives you a lot of freedom musically. You know you have to stay within a certain emotion or vibe or something. Hell yeah. But it gives you a lot of freedom to just write nice pieces of music. Um, and because there's so much more music and the world's so much more vast and players play, you know, a feature film's two hours. You know, gameplay is going to be thousands of hours for this. You use a lot more instruments and there'll still be a lot more cohesion because there's Ooh, so much more Ooh, some eggs. I found a turkey like nest. Aren't built in a day. And in these early stages, That's the money. composers had very little to guide them on their path to creating an appropriate score. To help spark their imagination, Amazon Games provided the duo with early concept See, that's, and designs for inspiration. That's what I love. At first, there was not much, which actually... They gave them concept art. It's, it's that thing where you start with so little and, you, you know, then, then it's like, how do you try to narrow it down? So... And then we were asking for like give, give us anything that, that you something the muse so yeah an inspiration just, the costumes or just some landscape design yeah i get very influenced by colors so i, I get very inspired as the game progressed we get some playthroughs and we'd see so like what's significant is you look at that you look at, a, at the art or the character design or and then like what's cool is the composer feels a certain way from looking at that what he was saying was the color specifically invoked the emotion for him. And then they translate that. It's like translating a language, like from English to Spanish or something like that, or German to English. It's it's like you you then convey that emotion through a different medium, which is the instrument. And the composer has the whole orchestra of instruments. So it's fucking cool. That's cool characters running through different areas and levels or are fighting one another we weren't trying to pinpoint an authentic time period or anything because it's just it's just a different world right so it gave us the creative freedom to just get to react to what we were seeing and just attach a sonic landscape to it for a world a sonic dun, 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 a landscape and instruments used had to be equally varied to help ground the player in a sense of place befitting of the many regions of the game's world 
but variety was an aspect of scoring that Ramin and Brandon embraced. We used, we used a lot. I mean, we used a lot. I mean, obviously, we used the orchestra quite a bit, and we used, Hell yeah. uh, like, traditional choir quite a bit, but we used solo singers, and we used solo instruments, mandolin to fiddle to accordion to ethnic woodwinds to ethnic woodwinds of, you know we were trying to just really get wide and then we used a whole bunch get of wide percussion and it was a dream job in a way for a composer because we we could just look for any instrument and so oh what we haven't used this instrument yet. Steel drum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i wonder how many indie studios are looking at these guys like fuck you <laughs> So we just nerded out and we just had fun with it. Yeah. The one that's used most often in the game was that big drum that I found in New Mexico. Well, the yeah. thing about it was New Mexico big. represent. We like, you know, we, we kind of like. The land of drum, enchantment. It, 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 it's beautiful. I mean, someone, you know, I don't know how long you take to make. I love this drum too. Whenever I'm in combat and I hear that shit popping off, I get into it. They take out a, a, a big, big tree. You hear it. Thunk, 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 hollow out and then they stretch over animal skins, uh, animal skin over both sides of it. It's got a beautiful tone, and I loved watching uh, some of the musicians in Taos play it. And I just thought it was—it was just a beautiful sound that would be that would be get a lot of mileage out in the game. We used quite a bit of uh, synthesizers uh, on the game as well. We use synthesizer, besides from an arrangement standpoint, also because you create kind of sounds that acoustic instruments can't play without kind of some type of manipulation. So you play something that you listen to, and you're like. I'm not exactly sure what that is. It it kind of sounds new, new, like, new, like a flute, new, but, it, but it's also that's not cool. a flute, and and so you can kind of create little other and it's all like warpy, wow, um, wow, synthesizers, which it's like Star Trek, is great for something like New World because it's rooted in you know in the real world, but it's it's a fictional land, so we uh, tried to have yeah. some kind of like you know otherworldly sounds in there. I love how they did the monsters. Yeah, and, and I think just as we were looking for as many different instruments as possible, I'll have. Uh, just a versatile score we felt that synthesizers are just as much part of the the palette that we are allowed to use because they're Hell another yeah. great addition to add more color to these tracks you can hear these more electronic sounds from the synthesizers used to evoke fear in they watch they watch do, 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 do. Oh shit, I'm gonna die. The music's killing me. Miracle of Azoth. Don't know it's in me. Oh, that's cool. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, we investigate. Do you know where your children are? In contrast, Acoustic sounds were used to inspire feelings of community or hope, which brings us to the game's main theme. So this is title, cool. A turnip. That was one of the first tracks we yeah. worked on, right? That yeah. was the, the, the one where we tried to identify and capture the overall mood of the game. And I just like picture Jean-Claude Van Damme on top of a mountain doing the splits going. <laughs> Oh, so this music. <laughs> it was kind of like our anchor to, you know, because we said instrumentation being color wise and dyna dynamic wise, we kind of end up kind of all over the place. And so we were able to anchor it back to our game by referencing, like, you know, little motifs from the from the main theme. Yeah. And I should go, rum, bum, 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 bum. Just think of it as this, this one theme that is kind of the, the core of it. Mr. All Pandaria that. vibes there. In their experimentation, the pair devised several unique sounds to represent the various factions and enemy types in the game. Oh my god, Before I'm gonna die. Earth, they combined pounding drums with eerie choir vocals, creating an ominous but otherworldly feel. This is it. Check this out. For the corrupted, they the corrupted auto strings to create a sense of dread. Da -da. Like some axe murder music. While the lost themes incorporated synthesizer sounds to instill a feeling Ooh, of discomfort. Oh, look at what we see right here. Oh shit, he's he's 37. He could kill me. I need to camp. Oh god. 
I'm in hostile territory. Can I Ancients, get this off? Being the precursors to all of the various enemy types, used a mixture of all these disparate elements. That's cool that they thought that way. That's interesting to me. You hear what they say? Look. The ancients used a mixture of all these disparate elements. Use a mixture of all of that. Because they were the primordial ancients, stuff that things came from. To all of the various enemy types, used a mixture of all these disparate elements. That's cool. But it wasn't just the music that gave the enemies authenticity. The sound team devised entire languages for the creatures of Aeternum to use. Regarding voices, this is crazy. We now have localized innate languages, but we also created three unique languages for the corrupted, the ancients, and the lost. Each language has 4,000 words with present, past, and future tenses, and complete grammar and conjugation. So I could say 4,000 words with past, present, and future. This dude is speaking fluent <laughs> grammar and conjugation. So I could say, for example, in the corrupt language, Mahibeb, Kin Bifanugo, Tetak Nom, Magmapibi, Kobam Biwunge, Dem Pafok Kaya. And that would mean, I see where they live. Come with me if you want to eat fresh meat. Beyond the score, it takes hundreds That's of crazy. Of sounds to create a world that feels alive. You wouldn't know that, but they're saying that shit to you as you walk by. In the wind to the sound of a spear striking a shield, a huge library of sound effects was required to give a turn in the level of detail it deserved. No trees were harmed in the making of the new world. <laughs> Get out there and work, Grandpa. I come from That's crazy. village in the northeast of France called Saint Abor, and during my many trips to visit family, uh, my dad would come with me to help me record the sounds uh, in the forest just five minutes drive from their house and would take ropes, would wrap them around the trees and pull them slowly to get a long cracking sound. That's Hearing cool. Those sounds in the live game reminds me of those intimate fiber and sun moments. I'm pretty happy with how the musket turned out after recording the Civil War. Oh, I didn't realize how much they did to the musket. They had a to place all our microphones on the field and around the cannons and close and far away from the musket. You see, I feel that Commercial sound libraries tend to focus too much on the blockbuster experience, and we're more looking for documentary style recording, so we knew we had to record it ourselves. And the musket shot ran out. That dude actually did not. <laughs> it changes over distance with the direction, but it also has different reflections for the different biomes and the different indoor locations, too. The is refining sound? fee in this town that I'm in, by the way, is crazy. I don't know if y'all saw that. I don't even know how, how I pulled it back up. Oh, it's right here, probably. Look at this. Look at the fees. Times two refining fee. Trading tax to average. Property tax moderate. Oh my god, extreme. What are you doing? Remind me to not craft here effects i think it comes from the level of details your voice gets muffled and resonates if you put a helmet on it ripped uh, you, you <laughs> it ripped the of your shirt or so, the lever code he said when you're talking like if i go proximity chat like hey what's going on guys what y'all doing then it'll actually sound fucked up if i have the hey what's going on guys how you do it'll sound like i got a mask on it or in a tin can hey guys what's up it's me a lewd stalwart <laughs> I don't know, try to. Uh, we, you can also hear the rustle of your shirt Here, or your lever coat all the way to the tinkle of your metallic armor. And we also added sounds for the sword on your hip or the bow that you have equipped on your uh, back all the way to the shield that you carry. He so did the... feel the weight of every weapon. But there's a catch. The heavier you get, the louder you become too. 
for the ambiences, if you go into the rain, you will hear the drops falling on your leather coat, but it will sound like tinkle if you wear metallic armor. Yeah. That rain actually changes if you're on the road or if you're on the grass, and if you go inside a wooden house, and it will change also if you're inside a tent. Yes, you'll actually Welcome. hear the drops That's falling the on the fabric now. above your head. That's baller. The ambience is actually driven by the assets. So if you are in a forest and some players chop down all the I'm trees, the sound of the wind the in the pine trees will actually the gradually fade out to complete silence. Through music, languages, and sound effects, the sound team has designed a world that feels real and tangible no matter what activities the player is participating in. This is thanks not only to the almost boundless creativity of the talent involved, but their enduring spirit of collaboration. This was the first, even though not release date-wise, but starting date-wise, it's the first time I got to collaborate with Ramin as a, as a co-composer. And so dynamically, our relationship was just a little bit different than it had been previously. And getting to work on melodies and themes and music with him was really kind of a, a special experience for me and uh you know i'm really proud of the music we came up with for this game it will always have like a very kind of special place in my heart we also recorded the prague orchestra a few times because you can't fake live performance uh, musicians add their own layers of interpretation and it just makes everything more real and organic collaborating with them was a dream come true for me but now might be the best time for you to judge it by yourself. Go listen to the soundtrack or come join us in the game and tell us what you think. See you in the tournament. I think that shit is badass. This is what I think. Yeah, I didn't know all that stuff. <laughs> the way that axe sounds is pretty cool too. Or the hammer. All right. So, so that's that stuff I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, right? Wasn't it? Wasn't it though?